In this series, I'm addressing cybersecurity topics with Groove devices. Specifically, this video is about certificate authorities or CAs with a focus on private certificate authorities. I'll go over the exact steps in a moment, but ultimately my goal is to use a private certificate authority on the Opto network and use it to sign a server certificate generated on a Groove device. Then when I upload that signed certificate back into the Groove server, I'll be able to securely visit it from any system on this domain. Before I dive right into generating the files I need and going through the signing process, I'll first give a little bit of a background on certificates in general, why certificate authorities in particular are valuable, and we can actually see what's going on in the background. So let's start by just looking at the process of communicating with a server. It's pretty simple. What we want is kind of just to be able to reach out to a server and get a secure, trusted response back. And that's going to be represented by a little padlock that we'll see in the browser. But unfortunately, it's not quite this straightforward. There's quite a few steps that need to happen that's kind of like a handshake process between the web browser and the server, in this case, the Groove server. So the first part is that you put in your URL and the browser requests a secure connection with that server. Then the server responds with its certificate info, and we'll actually be able to see this inside the browser in a moment. Then once the web browser gets that certificate back, it needs to make sure that it can trust that certificate. And this is going to be exactly the same, whether it's a private certificate authority, a public CA, or even a self-signed certificate. We can also view all of the certificates we have in our trusted store. Next, once it knows it can trust that server, it'll reach out and say, yes, I'll have this one-time session with you because I know I can trust you. And the server will respond and we'll get that padlock and we'll be able to communicate with the server securely. So let's start by having a look at an example of a public certificate authority, a private certificate authority, and a self-signed certificate. Then we'll dive into the signing process. Let's bring open the browser so that we can start digging into this. You can see here, I'm just on the Opto22 homepage. Right here, you can see it's HTTPS, and we do have this padlock up in the top left here. If I select that padlock, you can see that the connection is secure, and I have a valid certificate. If I select that, I can view the certificate right here. You can see it does apply to the Opto22 website, and it's issued by this DigiCert Certificate Authority, this public CA. These are really great for web services, and believe it or not, you actually have a lot of these already installed in your system, just like this DigiCert. You need these public certificate authorities to be able to reach out to different services like Google or Amazon or your bank. That's how you can have a trusted connection with them. But where are these certificate authorities stored? Let's take a look at that now. I'll start by selecting the start menu and typing in run, just R-U-N, and that'll bring open this app here. The command that you want to run is certmgr.msc. Just type that in and click OK, and it'll bring open this pop-up you see here. This is the cert manager for the current user that I'm logged into. You can use the Microsoft Management Console to view all certificates for every single user on the computer, but that would require admin privileges. That being said, when you are in this certificate browser, try to be careful about what you're doing. You don't want to accidentally delete the wrong thing and not be able to have your secure, secure connections. Of particular interest today is this trusted root certification authorities. If I select that and then select certificates, we can see all of the certificates that I already have installed in this system. Some of these might even be familiar to you, like the public certificate authority GoDaddy and Global Sign, and then of course the DigiCerts that we use to connect to the Opto website. All of these are really important and valuable and help you reach out to different services on the internet, including our Opto pages, even our blog and our forums and our developer site. As well as these public certificate authorities I just mentioned, we also have some private certificate authorities, and that's where we're going to be focused today. In the Opto building, to connect to all the different Groove devices that we have here, we use this Opto 22 CA. And this is something our IT team has set up so that we can use it to sign our devices. And we'll be running that through something called Active Directory, which is a Microsoft service. Your IT team may be using something similar. We also have this other private certificate authority called Opto Demos. This is another one we have set up just for the devices here in the demo studio that I'm shooting in today. Finally, I just want to point out this self-signed certificate that I set up in a previous video. And this is just a one-to-one -one certificate that I've set up with a Rio device. If you're interested in self-signed certificates, we already have some videos that go really in depth into that, and we'll have some links to that in the description below. Let's start by looking at this Opto Demos CA. I'll just come back to my browser, say, okay, yep, I've addressed this public certificate authority. Let's have a look at this private CA. 
Here we have a Rio Scada right here in this demo studio. And if I select the lock icon, you can see it is still the same secure connection. And if I view the certificate, you can see that instead of it being a self-signed certificate, it is that private certificate authority that I just pointed out. It's the same spot in that same trusted store. It's just instead of being a public certificate authority that you might have, it's one that I've personally installed on this system. They all exist in the same trusted store and they all communicate in the same way. The difference is one is public and one is private just on this network. The next one we'll look at is this Rio cert that I just showed you again. Same thing in the trusted store, but if I select connection is secure and view the certificate, you can see that it's self-signed. It is to this Rio cert hostname, but it's issued by this same hostname. I did custom create this self-signed certificate, but it is still self-signed. The kind of downside to using self-signed certificates is that if someone else wanted to try to visit this device securely on our network, I would have to give them a copy of that certificate and they would have to install it into their trusted store as well. Similarly, if I wanted to add another self-signed certificate to a different device, say a Groove Epic, I would have to have yet another self-signed certificate that I would have to generate on the device and then install into my system. It's very much so one-to-one. -one. The big benefit with certificate authorities is that if I give the uh, opto demo certificate to anyone in this building, they'll be able to reach all the devices here in this studio securely and with a trusted connection. So certificate authorities are really useful and are often the way to go. The one kind of downside is they do require you to work with your IT team a bit, but the benefits are huge. So let's start moving on with that private certificate authority. Here you can see I have a default hostname device here that I haven't set up yet. This is just a Groove Epic as it would come off the shelf. When I first try to connect, you can see it's not secure, but that's not the case. It is still HTTPS. It's just that because this certificate, if I view it here, it, this certificate, this self-signed certificate is not in my trusted store. And we can confirm that here. You can see there's no opto device here that matches that hostname. I don't have that self-signed certificate in my system yet. And so my browser doesn't know that I can trust it. I'm not able to complete this step here. If we bring open the uh, flowchart here again, I'm checking against the verified trusted store, but I'm not able to find it there. And so I don't make that one time session. However, I still can connect to the device by saying, hey, I'm sitting here and I'm saying I trust it as the user. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed to the server. This is still HTTPS. So I am still safe to use this verified connection to type in my credentials. I'll go ahead and sign in and I have a uh, secure and encrypted connection to my device. I'm able to get in here and get the files I need for the certificate. Let's start by just viewing the certificate under security and server SSL. Here, if I view the decoded certificate, you can see here that the subject of this certificate is that common name, that default hostname, and the issuer is that same hostname. This is just the default self-signed certificate that's generated on this device before it ships out of the factory. Let's replace this with a custom hostname, generate a new certificate that matches that hostname. Then we'll download the files we need, sign it with our certificate authority system through Active Directory, upload that signed certificate, and we'll have a secure connection with our CA. So let's start by changing the host name. You can do that under network and just click configure. Here you can see there's my default host name. Let's change that with something else. Let's call it Epic Demo since I'm using it to demonstrate something on an Epic. I'll go ahead and click save and we'll reload this page with this new host name. However, because I still have that same self-signed certificate, this isn't going to generate a new certificate and that certificate doesn't match this host name. I'll again have to make another one time exception. So as soon as the page reloads again, I will have to click advance and proceed to the device once more. Because it's a new hostname, I'll also need to log in again. Once I log in, we can confirm if I just click network status. Yep, my hostname has in fact changed. So now before I go ahead and generate the certificate, there's something really important you need to keep in mind first. If we look at this certificate, you can see it's not valid before some certain time and it's not valid after some certain time. If you have the wrong system time zone set, it is possible that you'll generate some certificate that isn't valid until sometime in the future, and that's no good. So we'll first go ahead and make sure our time zone is correct. You can find that under system and time, and you can see that the default time zone here is universal. If you are in the universal time zone, you're fine. You don't need to change that, but I'm not. I'm in America and I'll be in the Los Angeles time zone because I'm in Temecula, California. That's where Opto's headquarters is. So down here under L, I'll just select Los Angeles and I'll make sure I click set zone before I leave this page. Otherwise the setting won't be saved. Now I'm free to leave. 
come back to my security settings, and I'll generate a new certificate. You do that by just clicking Create Certificate right here at the bottom. You can see it automatically fills in the server name with my uh, default, with my new host name, and I'm able to fill in this whole form. I've done it several times before, so I'll let it autofill. One thing you want to make sure of is that you use a two-letter country code. For me, that's just US. But if you don't know what your country code is and you're not in the United States, just look up this ISO format right here, and you'll find a full list of all the different two-letter country codes. Finally, I'll fill in my department, which is just going to be developer. I would recommend that you don't change the expiration date or the uh, RSA key size unless you have a really good reason to and you know what you're doing. These defaults are really solid. Once you've filled all that in, go ahead and click Create. And again, it's going to generate a new certificate that my browser doesn't recognize. So, yep, that means once more I will need to make a one-time exception. Yep, once my page refreshes, I'll click Advance and proceed to my device. Now, if I view the decoded certificate, you can see I have all this extra info under my subject, and I do have that new common name, which is my new host name. But it is still self-signed. You can see the issuer is exactly the same as the subject. So let's go ahead and download the files we need to get this signed. I'll start by downloading the private key. I will need that. You can see I already have a couple of different certificate uh, files stored here. So to help me keep track of what's what, I am going to rename this key file. I am going to use my host name to help identify it. So I'll type in epic-demo underscore key because this is my private key. I'll go ahead and click save. And there we go. It's downloaded right here. The other thing I'll need is the Certificate Signing Request, or CSR. This helps identify what my server is to the signing service, which is going to be my private CA. I'll also give this a more appropriate name, epic-demo underscore CSR. You'll notice that all of these .pem files have this blue ribbon on the left. That's because my default way of viewing these, were essentially text files, is what's called Visual Studio Code. You don't need Visual Studio Code to view these files. You can use any text editor, but Visual Studio Code is a good option. So I'll save my second PEM file, that's CSR, and I've got everything I need. Now let's head over to our signing service. That's going to be Active Directory. And this is where things might look a little bit different for you, depending on how your IT team has all this set up. For me, I'm just going to log into this endpoint that we have right here with my uh, domain account. You'll note that I can download the private certificate authority right here by just clicking downloads a CA certificate. But I already did have that in my system and I didn't manually install that. That's because something else our IT team has set up is that if I do log into a system on the Opto network with my domain account, there's a startup script that goes and gets this certificate for me and makes sure it's updated. This is really handy because it means I could go to any system or my coworker could be on their system. And as long as they're logged in with the domain account, they already have this certificate authority right here. They just need to reach out to any device that's been signed by it or sign their own device with this service and they'll be able to securely and have a trusted uh, connection to it. Let's go back to Active Directory. I'm not going to be downloading the certificate authority uh, certificate right now, but we will come back to that. For now, we want to just sign that certificate. So I'll go ahead and click Request a Certificate, and I'm going to be submitting an advanced certificate request. What we have set up here is what's called a certificate template. I'm going to drop that down and select Groove Internal Certificate. That's, again, something our IT team has got set up for these different Groove devices. The next thing I need to do is paste in the contents of my CSR. I'll just open that up, again, in Visual Studio Code, but you can use any text editor you want, because this is just text. So I'm able to just highlight all of this, right click and copy it to my clipboard, and I'll close out of this. I don't need it anymore. I just paste this text in here and click Submit, and the certificate authority will sign it for me. Now I'm going to download this signed server certificate to my system, and I'm going to be dropping it in that same folder. You'll note that you don't see my .pem files because I'm just viewing the .cer files. I'll call this epic-demo just like my host name I used on the other files, and I'm going to put SC for server certificate so that I know what it does. I'll go ahead and click Save, and we'll need to upload this back into our Groove device. To do that, just select Upload Certificate. And here you can see why we had to download the private key, and this is where the server certificate goes. We're not using intermediate certificates for this step. I'll go ahead and click Public Certificate, and select that public certificate, that epic demo underscore SC. I just open that and select private key, do the same thing, but with my key right here. 
select that PEM file, click open, and I'm going to upload this to my system. It will take a little bit to ingest it and confirm that the key does in fact match the server certificate, and I'll reload the page. You'll notice though, I just uploaded a signed certificate that matches a certificate authority that I have in my system. I can confirm that it did in fact upload it and sign it correctly because here it's issued to this device, this host name, and it's issued by that certificate authority, but it still says not secure. And that's normal. That's because we have a cached session within Chrome. Chrome holds on to this session that I've already made an exception for, and it doesn't know to double check the certificate authority. Sometimes you can get away with just clicking the X in the top right, closing your browser and opening it again, but Chrome has a habit of keeping background tasks open. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring open my task manager, right click Google Chrome, and I'm going to kill it entirely. I'm just going to end task. Make sure you save your work before you do that, of course, but that's going to make sure there's nothing in the background. Now I can click on my Chrome again, open my browser for that developer user, and it will give me the opportunity to restore my page. As soon as I do that, we can see I'm still on that same epic demo, but now I have that padlock up in the top left. My connection is secure. My certificate is valid. Here we go. I've got that signed certificate. It matches my CA and it's issued to this device. Now I can visit any device that's signed by this private certificate authority, and I'm able to connect to all the different devices that are signed by it. I can do this for as many devices as I want, and just by downloading that one certificate, I can install it on even a personal system. Let's have a look at what that would be like. Let's say I'm here on this Active Directory website, but I'm on my personal computer that, you know, a laptop that I've brought in from home or something like that, and I don't have a domain account on it. So what I can do is I can just log into that same endpoint, click download CA certificate, and download the CA certificate file. I just select that for the opto 22 ca and install it to my system. In this case, I'm just going to call it opto22-ca.cer. Once I save that to my system, you'll see it right here, and I can show it in my folder. Let's bring that over so we can see it, and I'm going to right-click it, and there's this simple option because it's a .cer file. Windows knows that it's a certificate, and I can just right-click and click Install Certificate. I'll go ahead and click Open to open the certificate import wizard, and you'll see this right here. I can do this just for the current user, and that doesn't require admin privileges. Since I'm, I'm the user that's logged in, I'm saying I want to install it for me, that's all I need to do. I can also install it for the local machine, but you'll notice as soon as I click that, I get this shield here. That means that I will have to have admin privileges to install it for every user on this computer. For now, let's just see what it would look like to install it for this current user. I'll go ahead and click Next, and the thing I need to make sure I do is place all the certificates in the following store. It won't always automatically try to put it in the trusted root certification authorities. I have to click, place it in the specific one, select browse, select trusted root certification authorities, and click OK. That means it's for sure going in my trusted store. That's where it needs to be. Then I would just click next and finish. I don't need to install it since it's already on this computer. I just wanted to see you to see what that process was like. So that's a general sort of overview of the difference between private certificate authorities, public certificate authorities, and a little look at what uh, self-signed certificates look like. It's really important that you have secure and trusted connections with your devices, specifically Groove devices, and which option you go with is going to depend on your particular application. I hope you found this helpful, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below or check out our forums at forums.opto22.com. We'll have links to everything you need in the description below. Thanks for watching.